Welcome back to BBN tonight. We didn't get to talk too much about it, but the basketball team does have their first true SEC road test of the season. Traveling to Baton Rouge tomorrow to take on number 21 LSU Tigers. Bill, I'm excited to find out who those true road dogs are on this year's team. And they've won their last four games by a combined 135 points. Safe to say they're playing pretty well. Kentucky's last win was on Friday over Tubby Smith and his high point team when Coach Smith had his jersey enshrined in the rafters at Ruff. Jack Givens was at the banquet the night before and talked with a few of Tubby's former players. I'm really, really fortunate to be able to spend just a couple of minutes with the man himself, Coach Tubby Smith. And uh, Coach, it's awesome to have you in the house again. And um, I liked seeing you better in the blue and white, but <laughs> it's not going to happen today. But it, it's very nice having you in. Well, it's certainly a privilege to be back here at Rupp Arena. In fact, this is probably my first time since I left back in 2008. You know, certainly we weren't looking forward to playing Kentucky, <laughs> and they're playing very well. Right. John, right. you know, Coach Calipari got his troops playing extremely well, but this, we're so grateful to have this opportunity. I know every time I walk in and I've got my grandkids and they look up and they see number yeah. 21 with my name on it, it's, it's just a source of pride immediately. Uh, what does this, mean, this day mean to you? Well, it's, it's, you know, it's emotional because you – Mm -hmm. Part of your life. I mean, people don't realize I spent 12 years here, two as an assistant coach and 10 as a head coach. So it's probably the longest tenure in my coaching career mm -hmm. and um, the winningest <laughs> tenure in my coach's career. But it's, it's about people, about friends uh, and the relationships mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. built with your players, with the administration, right. with your staff like Marta McMack and other people that you see and, and you just want to embrace them and thank them mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. what they've meant and and to say how much it was a privilege to lead the greatest college basketball program in the history of America. Growing up you know as a coach's son you don't you don't get a chance to see your father often. I was lucky enough to actually play for my dad to right. see him even more day to day every day. Now it could have been you know a little bit more difficult for me because he was usually yelling at me yeah. for something uh, I did wrong or yelling at me for something someone else did wrong. That was right. probably my fault, too, for not getting him in the right place. But uh, I thank God for it every day that I had a chance to play for my dad. I thank God I had a chance to play at the University of Kentucky. When you get to college, a lot of times, you know, the coaches want the players that they recruit to be playing. During the time that I was here, there was a lot of calls. Is Richie going to play tonight or whatever? But uh, but I'll tell you that Tubby was that guy that uh, he probably stood up for me more than anybody in the coaches' meetings. I heard him tell people, you know, look, I take this guy every day in practice and, uh, you know, we win the games most of the time. So mm -hmm. he deserves to be on the floor. Yeah. So when he left to go to Tulsa, I remember going into his office and and talking to him about that, and I just wanted to thank him for, you know, the time that uh, that I got to spend around him and the things that I learned from him and uh, just just the fun times that we had. That was a good time in, in Kentucky basketball. I remember with Coach, I was a senior, and, you know, Coach walked into the lodge on the weekend, and, you know, a lot of times custodians don't work on the weekend, and, you know, the place was just – you know, unacceptable. And Coach yelled, everybody get out here in the hallway. You know, all this trash in the hallway. Y'all clean it up. And I think someone said, well, we thought the custodian. He said, no, y'all live here. This is where y'all live. Y'all make the mess. Y'all clean up the mess. So everybody <laughs> came out and cleaned up the mess. But that was definitely a life lesson yeah. learning story. It happened probably about five years after I got done playing. I had a just got, you know, my first job, and I'm doing really well. I bought a big fancy car, and I was actually out playing in the park. Mm -hmm. And I was leaving the park, and I had taken my shirt off. It was very hot. Taking my shirt off. And I passed Tubby. He was, I was going east. He was going west. And he waved me down. And he, I got the car. So I'm thinking he's going to congratulate me on, you know, you're doing great. Absolutely. You know what he said? Your shirt is off, and you represent me and the university. You need to go put a shirt on right now. Oh, Something that my dad would have said. So, I mean, he never let us slide on anything. And I appreciated, yeah. you know, him looking out for me, even as an adult, still making sure that we do those little things that people should do to show that we're 
to be taken seriously. We had to report for summer camp. Now, this is the year after Coach Patino had left. Uh, Tubby had come in, and we went as a team. We we went haywire that summer. We had right. we we had no we had no accountability. We had no head coach. So uh, finally, Coach Smith is named the coach, and uh, he slowly starts moving up and integrating himself. And so we all show up, and because nobody's everybody's loose, relaxed, you know, where there's right. no rules, we all bring our girlfriends. No we way. weren't allowed to have girlfriends under the prior coach, so we all bring our girlfriends. And Coach Smith walks in, and steps up and introduces himself eye, eye to eye hand-to-hand to to every single person in that room, even the players, as if we didn't know who he was. He always introduces himself. He does not expect you to know who he is. And and that's one of the reasons he's always beloved. The basketball stuff, the stuff that we're celebrating today, uh, that's all obvious. I mean, there's a banner hanging up there because because of him. Um, and because of him, uh, not because of the players as much as because of him. He, he, that's his banner. Um, but what's great is all the lessons he taught us have nothing to do with basketball. He's lived a life of consistency. He's li- lived a life of humility. Mm-hmm. He's lived a life of, of just really caring for other people and putting other people first. And, uh, boy, if I can just do a little bit of that each day, then I'll have a great day. He was a really good, good coach for me in those four years. He made sure I stayed on top of my schoolwork. Made sure I did, I did the things on the court and off the court just uh, to be the best teammate I could be and, and be the best person I could be. All the things that he taught me while I was here at UK, I mean, I still use those same teachings as I coach uh, my high school girls here at uh, Wilford County. In this business, coaching, anything that, you, that you're in charge, there's going to be a lot of um, ups and downs. We have more ups than downs here, so that's why I'm, I'm really so ecstatic mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's and so proud to, yes. to be a part of this great history of Kentucky by having my a banner raised in Rupp Arena.